Around one in every 10 Americans say that they believe that the Earth is flat or that they at least have their doubts that it's round. I'm going to test that. I'm going to test if the Earth is flat or not. And to do that, I actually need to go somewhere where it's super flat. So that's why I'm going to Regina, Saskatchewan in Canada, and I'm going to measure and calculate the size of the Earth using just my bicycle and two sticks. This is not a joke. I'm here with Casey at the Saskatchewan Science Centre and we've got two identical sundials set up. Right now, since they're in the same place, the shadows are the same length. But I'm going to be leaving one of them here with you, Casey. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. And he is going to set it up on this very spot right here. And I'm taking the other sundial and I've strapped it to my bike. And I'm going to bike down that road right there. And that road is the reason that I've come all of the way to Saskatchewan because that road is perfectly straight for somewhere around 140 kilometers. And I'm co I've come to measure that distance on my bike. Okay, so I just zeroed the odometer. Let's get started. Here goes science, okay. <laughs> This is Highway 33, and since it's very flat here, and there are no mountains to go around or hills to go over, this is one of the longest straight roads in the whole world. And that's why I'm here. Let's pretend that this orange is the Earth. Now, this is the Earth, and these two sticks are going to be the two sundials we're working with. So I'm going to put them in. Don't try this at home, please. Okay. Since the orange is round, anytime we line up the shadows like this, they will never be the same length. If the shadow on the right is short, we can expect the one on the left to be longer. If they were the same length, then the orange would have to be flat. Now we can also measure the length of the two shadows at the same time and measure the distance between them and figure out the circumference. Since the sun is really far away, we can treat its light as coming in straight lines. And therefore, we can figure out what angle it's hitting both of the sticks at. And that allows us to figure out what angle the two sticks would meet up at in the center of the orange without having to pull the orange apart. Let's say that that angle, this angle here, is 45 degrees. That's one eighth of a circle. So the distance between the two sticks, this distance here, that is one eighth. That's one eighth of the circumference around the orange. So we measure that distance, we multiply it by eight, and we know how big the orange or the earth is. That's what I'm doing, except instead of these two sticks, we're using sundials, and instead of measuring this with a ruler, I'm measuring it with my bike right now in Saskatchewan. <laughs> I got the wind in my back. And it is a beautiful day. I'm clocking at 28.8 kilometers an hour. This is just great. Things are awesome. To celebrate the 100 kilometer mark, I'm going to eat the earth. <laughs> it's pretty good. It shouldn't surprise you that I'm not the first person to do this experiment. A Greek scientist named Aristosthenes did it 2,200 years ago. Except instead of it being in Regina and Staunton, he used the cities Alexandria and Syene. And those cities were 800 kilometers apart. He didn't have bicycles back then. So he had someone pace the distance between the two cities, which is crazy. And, and they were 800 kilometers apart. And his measurement and his calculations were so precise that it was still within 1% to 16% of the actual circumference of the Earth. That's incredible. But we don't know exactly what his answer was because he used a unit called stadia, which was how big a stadium was. And there were different sizes of stadiums and we don't know what one he meant. So his answer has been lost to the sands of time 
but I'm gonna try to redo it with a huge upgrade in technology. We're using a bike. I biked 138 kilometers today from Regina to reach the first stop sign. It's the end of the road and it is Stoughton. Okay, so I just set up one sundial in Stoughton and Casey set up the other one in Regina. We made sure that they were both level and checked that they were both aligned with one another and everything seems to be good. Okay, I think my math was a tiny, tiny bit off um, because I thought that the measurement was gonna take place at 10.59 um, and it is 11.04 and we're still a few minutes away. Um, so I think it will be more like 11.15, but you know, with this experiment, what matters is that the sundials are lined up with the road and lined up with each other. And I just got off the phone with Casey and Regina and we are at the exact same point, the exact same angle right now with our sundials. At least this angle is the same. Yeah, I know, a little nerve wracking, right? We're really close though. Mine is officially on the meter stick. Is yours almost there? Yeah. Um, okay, so in, well, in another, like, maybe we'll say 10 seconds, you can grab your chalk. Your, your line looks pretty good, right? Um, so this is it, okay. Okay, we'll take the measurements in three, two, one, now. I've got... Okay, I just measured my shadow and mine was 66 cent 66.1 centimeters and then i called casey and his was 70.0 centimeters which means that our shadows are 3.9 centimeters different mine is 3.9 centimeters smaller than his is in regina which means that the earth is a sphere and it means that i can calculate the size of the earth now i expect that it won't be exactly accurate, but it's going to be pretty darn close. Oh, that's really, really rad. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna hang up and get packed and get on the road. We now have all of the measurements that we need in order to do the calculations for the circumference of the Earth. So I left Regina on my bike and I cycled all the way to Stoughton. That distance was 138 kilometers. When I got to Stoughton, I set up a sundial that was 100 centimeters high and I measured the shadow of the sundial at a specific time. The shadow was 66.1 centimeters long. And so we can do some simple math to figure out the angle at which the sun was hitting the top of the sundial. And that turns out to be 56.5 degrees. Now, at the exact same time I was taking that measurement, Casey in Regina was taking another measurement on an identical sundial, and his measurement was 3.9 centimeters longer. He measured a shadow of 70.0 centimeters. And that means that the Earth is a sphere, and we can calculate its circumference. We used the same math to figure out the angle that the sun hit the top of his sundial. That was 55.0 degrees. Since we know the angle that the sun hit both of those sundials, and since the sun is really far away, we can calculate the angle that those two sundials would meet up at if they met in the center of the Earth. We take the angle from Regina and subtract it from the angle in Stoughton, and we get 1.5 degrees. That means that the angle that those meet up at in the center of the Earth is 1.5 degrees, or 1 240th of the circumference of the Earth. And now, now that we know that the distance we measured is 1 240th of the way around the whole Earth, if we take the distance that I measured, the distance that I biked, and multiply it by 240, we can figure out how big the circumference of the entire world is. When we do that, we end up with 33,120 kilometers. By my calculations, that is the size of the Earth. 
and it's pretty darn close. The true size of the Earth is 40,075 kilometers, which means that my measurements and calculations are only 17% off. Aristosthenes' measurements and calculations were maybe 16% off. I'm really happy with how that turned out. When Eratosthenes did this experiment over 2,000 years ago, he not only proved that the world is round, but he measured it and proved that it is a knowable thing. The Earth is something we can experiment on and learn about. I'm really happy with how well my experiment turned out because I have confirmed that the Earth is indeed round and I measured it to be 33,120 kilometers around. And that's not exactly right, but I mean, my measurement is closer to the Earth than it is to Mars, and I'm pretty happy with that. The reason my measurement isn't 100% accurate is because I didn't manage to line things up perfectly, so we took the measurement about 12 minutes too late, which is enough to make an error of 17%. But still, I'm really, really happy with how well it turned out. I try to do experiments that are almost impossible, that are just at the border of being impossible. And so if they always worked out perfectly 100% of the time, I think I wouldn't be trying things that are hard enough. Sometimes I get asked, how do I make enough money from these videos to fund big science projects like this? And my answer to that is that I don't. I don't even make enough money from this channel to pay for my expenses, let alone my time. But if you want... <laughs> So that means someone just subscribed to my channel. If you want to support what I do here on this channel, please check out my Patreon page. Every little bit helps, and actually every patron adds a drop in the bucket. Another way you can support me is to subscribe to my channel and like this video. It's not just meaningless internet points, it actually affects the algorithm, which changes how many people will see my science content. Uh, so that's huge for me. Lastly, I absolutely need to thank Casey and Ryan and everyone at the Saskatchewan Science Center for making this whole project possible. It just wouldn't have been possible to measure the Earth without them. So please, if you're in Regina, check out this place. It is amazing. And check out their website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching.